Welcome back, Shark Nation Live. We are here for a special episode. We're in Punta Cana this week. International episode. Can't beat that. That's true. We have our passports. We are ready to communicado. Different, different <laughs> laws, right? We can do different things on this episode. All right, yeah. <laughs> Clothing <laughs> optional. You never know how the Dominican rules, but uh, you know. yeah, we're at a, yeah, we're here for, for one of our partner's weddings, Ryan Tizzy, who was on one of the previous episodes. Go check that out, but... Uh, amazing wedding, but um, we want to talk about how it must be nice. It must be nice to be in Punta Cana as real estate agents here. We live the life. We live the dream life. Uh, yeah. Well, where do you want to take it, Jason? Where do <laughs> you want to roll? Well, I mean, a couple of things that we could talk about here. One, I think, would be important is that, you know, could you really get away, right? You know, there's always something to do. I mean, I've had closings this week that I had to take care of kind of remotely. I'm sure you had a bunch of stuff with the team that you have too. How do you kind of uh, how do you kind of separate it, right? You're supposed to be here on vacation and relaxing, but yet you have work to do. Right. Yeah, I think well, I think it depends on where you're at too. I mean, you know, if you're on the come up, I don't know like as a solo agent just trying to make this real, let's let's say in your first six months or a year. Yeah. Or, or your first six months of you, or, um, or a year of making it real, you know, like maybe you were part-time in it before and then you're going like, I don't know that you have much choice of unplugging at that time, to be honest. Like, cause I don't, I don't know, like, you know, I think about it and I think about month nine or 10 of mine is where we got married and we went to Vegas and then we talked about it on my feet to the fire. The grilling one. Like, like yeah. yeah. But, you know, I had to unplug cause it was my wedding and I lost deals then and so I don't think there's a choice in the beginning. Yeah. But then as you become a, a stable solo agent or a team leader or, or just not even a team leader of agents, but a team leader of, you know, like like solo agent with li licensed or unlicensed assistants and stuff, it's it's 100% possible with systems and processes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a test of your systems and processes. These trips, like right now, is a test to how I've held up and how you've held up. Yeah. And we get to take stock of that when we get back. Yeah, you could definitely get a uh, pulse of how well you have your systems and processes. So, a real good book by Dan Sullivan is Who Not How, right? So, you, you want to kind of find out how are your who's doing why you are not, you know, available. Like, you know, you don't have maybe cell phone reception. You might only be able to talk via WhatsApp and, you know, uh, email and all that kind of stuff and respond to things. And then you got to, you know, make sure everything gets done, right? So... Systems and processes, totally a great way to kind of benchmark it. Like take a short trip and see what blows up, right? You know, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think the other thing too is, and I think I think this is good because I just thought of this is the unrealized amount you're gonna want to relax. Like you know, when I go every every trip, this has never failed, no matter what stage. Every trip, and I'm sure you could. I'm, I'm curious to you. Any of this, I'm like, I'll, I'll handle some of this stuff there. It won't be bad. I'll take a minute away from the beach or I'll, I'll do it on the airplane. Yeah. And you get on the airplane or you get to the beach and you, you need to like have a padding for like you're full of shit. Cause yeah. like there's 30% of that or 50% of that you're not going to do because you're going to, you know what I mean? So it's like you think you're going to get this much done, you know, but you're, but you're not for what you do plan to do while you're there. Right. Yeah. Or, I mean, no, I have to totally talk. right. Yeah. So my, uh, my litmus test is my wife. So <laughs> she'll drop the hammer on my ass pretty quick if I'm working the whole time when I'm supposed to be relaxing. So that's a good, uh, start. So I told her, Hey, look at, you know, kind of heavy as the head that wears the crown type of thing. You know, I have certain responsibilities in our position that I have to take care of. Right. So, you know, maybe just in the morning and then maybe before bed or whatever, I could kind of check my stuff and then, you know, then I'll leave the phone in the room, you know, and then kind of unwind. But how do you kind of even, you know, turn it off, right? So you work so hard, right? And you, you do all the things that you do to kind of go on trips like this. Right. And then it's like, okay, well, now it's okay, just relax. Don't do anything for the whole day. It's well, like, <laughs> I think that's the perfect thing because it's like, you know, everybody gets into real estate for freedom and like, this is the idea, right? Like we don't have, we didn't have to put in time off and yeah. quest and, you know, and have somebody tell me you can't do these days and I get mad and I quit and yeah. give no notice. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Uh, well, really, I covered who Chad is on this podcast, thanks to thanks to Jason here. Um, <laughs> no two week notice for you, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I think I think that this is where I think these are where you understand that this is a lifestyle, not a job. Yeah, like, and and that's why, like, real estate, we we view it as a job, but it's it's real estate, it's entrepreneurism. Yep, like it's what it is. It's just with less capital risk, less requirements less instant gratification because you can't get the sale today like you get a sale and it's under contract period and all mm-hmm. that stuff it's not like just starting a business and selling donuts and you get paid today you yeah know? um you know but it's still all of the other characteristics are of entrepreneurism so it is a lifestyle and f- the freedom that that i feel like you and i have achieved a lot of pieces of this maybe at times it fades away and stuff yeah. but i feel like when i've achieved that freedom that exists in real estate it's not the freedom you'd expect. Like yeah. it is free to come do this without calling off, but the machine still runs. Yeah. And if something gets caught in it, you have to. It. I mean, when you own a home, there's some things where no one's coming to save you. You. It's your home. You have to fix it. You have to pay somebody to come fix it. You're away in the like. If you leave your house and a water line breaks, yeah. You've got to deal with that. Yep. And and that's and that's what it. Really, I think that's a perfect yeah. example. I think uh, Jocko Wilk uh, has a great quote, like, discipline equals freedom. Right. So if you kind of, you know, structure your day or whatever, structure your lifestyle around what you want, as long as you have that discipline to kind of, you know, put your reps in, right, then you have the freedom to do whatever you want. It's not, you know, hey, watch Netflix till 3 a.m. and drink beers all night. You know what I mean? Like... A lot of people struggle with that type of freedom. But I think setting up that discipline is actually a good thing for you. Like, you know, we want to stay consistent with the show, right? So we're here filming today because we, you know, we filmed a couple episodes when we weren't going to be there. And now we want to make sure that we stay consistent with our weekly output put forward. So it's like, hey, let's get get our rep in. We could be at the beach. We could be at the beach. It is a little cloudy. A little cloudy. Wives are at the beach. But, you know, we'll get get there in in, in a couple minutes. But... uh, (laughs) But like I said, that's, you know, we're working for that freedom, right? Yeah. But so you work hard, you play hard, right? When you're at the beach and you're just kind of chilling, how do you kind of turn it off, though? Like, I think that's more important than kind of like, okay, because some people will take vacations and then they're just, it's a working vacation. You know, like, I was going to have a coaching call and I was going to have this and I'm like, well, you know, eventually it was like, you know, I got to take the vacation with the family. My wife doesn't want me working the whole trip, right? It's like, I got to kind of disconnect and kind of, now it's family guy, right? I think this depends on the person. Because like for me, I want, uh, I I love it. I love, like, I love sitting here talking about this. Yeah. You know, I I like doing it better here. Very nice background. Yeah. And then when we're done, (laughs) we can go to the beach or we do like, I I love that stuff that like, you know, so I, I, but I, I still like, I could lay on the beach all day and talk to anybody about just just progress. It's not just entrepreneurism. It's not, you know, health and fitness. It's not that it, it just progress. I think it's what I'm addicted to is what I've learned is progress. But so to that point, so now it depends on the person because not everybody's going to be like me. Yeah. I don't know. But for me personally, I use this time to get the further, the deeper in that podcast that I haven't had time during the week to, you know, laying on the beach, me and my wife are laying there, headphones in. Let me get through these episodes of Hermosi's podcast that I yeah. haven't. Uh, let me expand my knowledge. Let me listen to a YouTube video that I never had time for because it's 45 minutes and I only had 20 that day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So read the book that I didn't want to read. So <laughs> I use it to do, like, zoom out, but still moving the forward. Like, you know, moving the stuff. needle forward. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I, Not in the micro. Same way. Like I said, we want to get some gym in. We wanted to get, like, you know, some relaxing time. Always, obviously, we had some activities with the, the wedding and stuff like that. But, yeah. I don't think you could, off, like, honestly, always just turn it off, right? Yeah, you I don't know? want to. I don't either, but it's, like, one of those things where it's, like, okay, I'll read my book now, you know, and then I'll chill. And then I'll do a little exercise, and then we'll hang, you know. But there's always something going on. But but to bring it to what you're getting, I mean, that when you bring, especially family, the equation, right, and there's wife, you're like, all right, so let's let's have a real story. I mean, this is that's what this podcast is, right? I'm sitting on there listening to my podcast. She's frustrated every time she talks to me because... I got my noise canceling headphones. Right? <laughs> like, I can't, you know. Yeah. Like okay, so I got 
this whole trip to continue on to this podcast and these flights because I've downloaded it, right? Yeah. Oh, no pressure, no stress. Yeah. Put it down. Yeah. Well, we go into the ocean, you know, and you yeah. unplug. Yeah. Um, leave leave your phone in the room if you're. Well, I have the cellular watch, so I can you know still get that st- if it needed. You know what yeah. I mean? And I, I love that at water parks, by the way, as well. No, uh, okay. Water because they're waterproof, and you yeah. can still get. Well, hacky. Well, hacky. Yeah, it's me. But but so I think you know I think even though I say like I won't turn it off, like you have to recognize when other people need you present, and if your kids, right? Yeah. Like you had spent some good time with your daughter here, right? Like yeah. that's. Yeah. Now I have to I, see. I'm the total opposite. Okay. Like, I can't. If I bring it, then I'm checking it, and I'm like a freaking idiot. Like I'll be like, mm-hmm. and she'll be like, "What are you doing on your phone?" And then I'm like, "Oh damn, she caught me." <laughs> so I gotta leave it in the room. If I don't leave it, then I can't look at it, and then I could, you know, the only thing it's like I'm like a caveman. I have like a book, and that's it. No technology, which is fine for for me, but I'm like itching at, you know, you know, like. Uh, I think I left something at the room, you know, and then it's like... Uh, so I'm, I'm curious on that, because... And this is cool, because people can see that it's different. Uh, like, for me, I'm a notification nerd. Like, I go through... Like, I spend... Mm-hmm. Every quarter, I probably go through my notifications and make sure I get the right ones. And, like, yeah. you know, like for my email, for example, there ain't a damn buzz that goes off. There isn't a badge. You yeah. know, it's only if I go into the email. Yeah. And for me, that's enough. Especially in the beach where it's sunny out. I can't, I'm not going to, like, want to, like, find the email button and check you know what i mean yeah would that help you or is it just no, something where i'm totally you know on focus mode i turn every single notification off and then i'll go in and i'll check individual apps that i want to check and then that's it mm. you know but i don't want any buzzing i don't want any distractions when i'm in like focus mode and work mode like that's it. I don't want ding, ding, or see well, that. I'm, I'm that little like, bubble drives me nuts. If I see the bubble, yeah, that I'm saying, something there. I'm saying if you customize your notifications, it. say you had vacation mode, yeah. right? And it didn't bug you at all, but it was still there. Would you still go to the email app? Yeah, yeah no, I can't get around it now. Okay. I'm like I'm, I'm like a like a fat kid in like a donut shop, man. I'll be like... <laughs> well, food, I'm, I have the same problem with food. So I, I understand. Yeah. Food, I'm that way. But yeah. with Tech, that, I, if it's around me, I got to check it. Okay. You know, so, but yeah, no. So if I want to have like, you know, time with the girls and, you know, time with the wife, I have to have it away from me. So if I leave it in the thing, it's out of, out of sight, out of mind. And I could just kind of just chill. So I think you have to find your rhythm then. I think that's, that's I mean, that's ultimately what it yeah. comes to because you see you and me are different in the way that we handle it. Yeah. Like I use this time to move the needle forward on the macro. Yeah. The, the big picture. Yeah. Where am I at? Where are we going? Mm. Why are we going? Yeah. And you use it to totally unplug, and that and 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 keep things moving. Still, you know, we still we, both of us keep things moving. Yeah, I think there's a time to reset, right, and kind of you know recharge the batteries, and then kind of hit the ground running as soon as I get back. But it's also like I said, you can never turn it up upstairs, right? So it's always like, oh, how can I do this? How can I do that? When you're kind of just chill, and then you can think more of the macro stuff because you're not in the micro. Yes. So I think like. You know, a great book on that is Michael Gerber, E-Myth. If you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. But it's talking about, like, working on your business, not working in your business. And when you can kind of step back and kind of do stuff like this, you can kind of work on the the, 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 the macro level instead of all the micro details. I struggle with that, though, too. Because, like, so, well, and here's where I come in. There's duality in a lot of things and a very middle way concept like buddhism is a philosophy not like you know going into religion here but like i mean effectively right you could be too nice of a person where you're like getting walked all over or too mean where you're dead yeah, people hate you they right work with you so you got to find that middle balance and, and you think about it relative to working on your business and in your business i i i think I think it depends on the type of person you are, like in which way you need pull, but you need that middle. You need to sometimes work on it and not in it, but then sometimes work in it and not on it. And yeah. for me, I did the grind, did the stuff, and then worked on it and not in it too much. Yeah. And then you stop moving the needle. So like, yes, but no. <laughs> well, in his book, he talks about kind of working on the macro level. And then, you know, once you figure out what, what that main goal is and then you kind of work down to the details Mm -hmm. so but you can get obsessed with the vision you can you can like mental masturbation of (laughs) just 
careerism like or, yeah. you know like or entrepreneurism yeah. i mean just you you know you cannot you it's because it's fun i mean it's fun like yeah. it's fun to go places and i'm gonna make these big plans and i'm gonna i'm gonna do this 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 and this and then, and then the work never gets done so yeah. like i there's there's a duality of that yeah. well there's well another book I'm, i feel like i'm a fucking amazon prime here <laughs> but uh you know, it's called EOS. Uh, I think it's scaling up or whatever, but basically it talks about, you know, the different person that's involved. So, you know, Gerber had, you know, working on the, the business and not in the business. Uh, he talks about, you know, the different people involved. One's the innovator, right? So you have all the great ideas and I want to do this and I want to do that. And then one's like the implementer, right? The one that actually gets all that stuff done. And then, so you might not be one person, but you might have to find your other. Right. So that's why sometimes like a lot of times partnerships work out well, because if, you know, both of you are the same, one of you is unnecessary. Right. But if you're the innovator and you've got all these great ideas and then you have somebody that could implement them. Right. That's where like the goal stronger happens. together. Yeah. Stronger together. And that's where you scale. The problem that we have is like, you'll see, we got to shut down. We got, the power is off. I mean, the power is still working. <laughs> Oh, hey, technology in another other country. You put another dime in the uh, in, in the power, rotate the the, the, the wheel. But, this all still works. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so a lot of times we're you Should know kind of that uh, that team setup is where it's two I'm agents. I'm, I'm carrying. I want to check. <laughs> <laughs> it broke it. We're good. Oh, we're what back. What did I do? That's good. Let's leave. Let's leave it real raw, and authentic. Yeah. Let's let's fine. leave the show interruption. We, we won't edit that. No. We had a, we, we had, <laughs> a, so we had a system reboot. Uh, the lights went off and then back on. Yeah. But, but we weren't we're connected. Not, we're not having a storm here, but who knows what's yeah. going on? Yeah. They didn't pay their bill. <laughs> TPNL's getting pissed. Though. So you okay? So you said to so if you're a lot of times where you know creating a team with two agents doesn't work out because they have the same skill set. Right, mm -hmm. they're both you yeah. know that type D personality, both the same agent. I hate the yeah. boxes, but I, I understand. Said, I don't, you know, you know, I think that for the crowd. I think they're full of shit. The, the boxes, boxes? Yeah. yeah, that's probably you know, I've heard a lot about that with the disc profiling and all yeah, that. Once a bunch of, I mean, I'm not saying there's not to say that there's literally only these types, and it, it, you're hiding behind the theory instead of just going and getting your feeling with people like just yeah. just do the shit and feel the person out and you know like we've ha okay this is good because it's relevant to this so i pulled up two loyal team members that dedicated that have been with me for a long time and made each one a manager in both markets one is relatively similar to me yeah with some slight differences where we you know like so we're pretty similar and then like 20 percent we go this way you know into our own core competencies but 80 percent were the same and then the other one she's very different from us very different like yeah. very skilled and you know different things like you know and obviously different personalities probably amongst all three of us yeah it has been like amazing to see what that dynamic has brought from the different types but i didn't need a disc profile to to figure that out yeah like i just met people talked to them feel i don't need some freaking personality quiz i don't know i i've always gotten annoyed with those I think, you know, I think they serve their purpose, right? So if you're hiring an accountant, right, you might want somebody that might kind of check more of those kind of like boxes, right? Detail oriented, you know, numbers person, blah, 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 blah. But I think like a lot of this, these skills and all that kind of stuff, you could learn, right? Like I was an introvert IT guy. So I was like behind the scenes, never really talked to anybody, never did any of that, right? So I had to learn sales skills. And that's like, okay, I had to be more of an extrovert, more of a public speaker more of a talker i hated doing all that shit i was like i ain't fucking talking in public no fucking way yeah you know now it's like okay well now i have to give speeches to you know the 20 agents on the team and now i have to you know so I have to rally all these troops and it's like okay but you can learn these skills so if you don't know now uh another good book but uh you know uh 10x is easier than 2x and in that book dan sullivan again he talks about the concept of you know becoming the person that you want to be Right. So if you see that you are, you know, struggling with certain skill sets, it's like, okay, go out and learn that because every skill you can learn, there's nothing that you can't learn in this world. That's the beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, we're going down the rabbit's hole today. I like it. I, I like it. Though. I think it's real. And I think that, 
you know, well, I mean, I just, I just think that to me, the people, I don't mean to use the word again, but mental masturbate over the disc profile thing. Yeah. Like, and it, it's the equivalent of AI to me. It's like, you're taking out the human element. Like, go ahead, put all your posts out through AI. Like, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're going to, it's, you'll just sit in the crowd and, you know, and then the disc thing, it's like, go ahead, get obsessed about the disc. And while you're obsessed about which letter they are, I'm finding the winner by talking to them yeah. like a human being. Like yeah. I'm a systems processes nerd. I love tech. I just talked about my notifications because, you know, you know this stuff, yeah. but I know the value of a human being and, yeah. and the human, like there's, you know, we actually, this is, this is wild because, you know, we, we were, we were at the wedding, so let's make it relevant. Yeah. Right. And uh, she was my wife was tearing up you know just regular wedding stuff yeah. you know at some moments in particular with the dances with, oh, the, yeah. with the music yeah. any daughter daddy dance forget about the, 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 the yeah but that's just, I mean but but what what we kind of were saying was <laughs> and yes the, the the human part of it too but a lot of it is music R music really adds like when you throw it like there's no real soundtrack to life that's why movies can get us to tear up more because yeah. that music but it is amazing yeah. how music can just get take the, the emotions. And there's no disc profile. There's no blah, blah, blah. There's genres. But there's you can't, even if you like rock, there's a country song that'll hit you in the right spot at the right time. And, like they, yeah. and you have no logic to explain that. Yeah. And and I think that's, I think it's weird. And I know that I went really different with that. But I feel like that's the problem with the disc profile versus meeting human beings, yeah. feeling them out. Because, you know, some people aren't good in the first interview. Some people say shit under weird circumstances. Some people had a hard day. Some people... Um, some people just don't do well in interviews. That's right? it. Some people don't like taking tests, right? So trying to do one of those things, it's like... And then, like I said, if you ever filled out one of those personality profiles, like, it's like, what does all this mean? Am I, like, a fucking psychopath or something <laughs> like that? You're, like, reading these questions, you're like, I don't know. You know, so it's like, am I being honest with this? Am I trying to lie during this thing? But, I mean, like, I get the purpose of it, right? You're kind of trying to figure out, like, hey, look, at what kind of skill set are you doing for the job? You know? So, I mean, but everything, like I said, could be trained, but it's still going down that route. I just, yeah. That's, I'm very anti, like, corporate, I think, is my thing. <laughs> you are. You are liking the freedom. Well, of... look at Elon Musk, yeah. right? He comes in and is like, this is dumb. And just, you know, and whether you like him or not, he's moved some companies along in his history. Yeah. So I think he's a person where he's just like, you know, there's too much bloat. Yeah. And I think that is a great example. Not all the time. Sure, there's outliers. Sure, there's people that use it well. You know, whatever. But yeah. I, I think a lot of times, and then it, be, it becomes the magic pill a lot of you have to hire a DNA and I or a high behind what just, yeah. just get back to humans. Well, so our wives don't kill us. Let's wrap it up with this, right? We have time. So we have seven minutes. We're good. All right. We, so, well, I, I got a good I know question it for felt you. Like it, it was, did feel like it was going. Plus yeah. we had the power out too. So, you know, what, what do you say to kind of people like, um, and I'll, I'll start with this one, right? Where, you know, oh, it must be nice that you're able to do that. <laughs> like, you know, and then you kind of get like the backhand, it, it must be nice. You know, you might get like the offhanded comment, and then sometimes you just get that overall jealousy, right? Oh, you're here, and you know, we're grinding away the nine to five. My, my thought is like, you know, there's room on the bus, 100%. Right? Like, come join us, we can show you exactly what we're doing to, you know, kind of make your dreams come true. Because it's like, you know, I think we were in Vegas, then I was in LA, and then we we're here at Punta Cana, I'm like, man, I got a lot of freaking frequent flyer miles. Now I'm kind of chill and I got, I got work to do, right? So it's a, a bunch of months in a row where it's focus time, you know? But, part, I mean, part of it is hard, it's just hard to show the dirtiness, you know, even even though I feel like you and I have dropped a lot of ego and we're pretty transparent, you know, it's hard to show the messy bed that's sitting behind the phone, <laughs> you know? I mean, the bed's a mess, so we packed up our shit, it looks ugly over there. We show the pretty side of it, and it's just a good example, but... The messy middle. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, that's part of it, and it's hard to show it all. But, but at the same time, you know, I used to get really annoyed when people would say that it's. It must be nice. Oh. No, no, no. This that they would you say? Well, they're just projecting their own, like whatever, you know, like their own that you know, and that and it really is what it is. Like you, you're just reminding them that they didn't take the risk or do the thing, um, yeah. because uh, you know. Anybody can get a real estate license. 
Any, you, anybody can listen to all of our podcast, all of our free content, and probably copy exactly what we're doing. You can. That's Go what we're do doing. <laughs> Go do that. I would love that. I would love to hear somebody that did that. That'd yeah. be awesome. The fact of it is, is I put all my stuff out there 10x like what I have. I probably put like like all the information 10 times over out there so you could totally rip it off and play it. But um, very few will do that. So because you come back to like, okay, you listening, if you have a W-2 job, you have to give up that comfy salary. You have to work when no one's looking. When you have nothing on your schedule and you just got your real estate license and you can sit and watch Netflix or play video games or take a trip to Punta Cana because you have cash in the bank from whatever you saved up for six months of real estate, you have to go call people and be told F off and leave me alone. Yeah, Although recently, calls have been really good. People are really receptive. <laughs> so I don't it's amazing know. what happens when you get on the phone. So I, to, to the point of it must be nice, I, I think it's you're just reminding them that they know they could be where you are, but they have made choices to not get there, and they're mad about it. Yeah, I hate well, there's a, I don't mean to be rude. No, well, there's but I do. there's a lot of risk, right? So people are risk adverse, right? So they're always kind of trying to like maximize the downside. Dude, I was shaking when I quit my W two job. Like I was super nervous that I was able going to be able to make it work. Like I had a six figure job. I had a good, you know. Benefits package, all that kind of stuff. I work for Canon. It's like a what, Fortune 100 company or whatever, traveling all over the freaking country. And, you know, like, must it was be nice. Good. It was nice, right? That was must be nice before. Now it's really must be nice because now, oh, now you're like, in like control. Said, yeah. Now I'm in control. I didn't have to take that scheduled time off. I didn't have to do all that kind of stuff. So they said the freedom's there. But I mean, like, I always say, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Right, so when I was going through this risk adverse situation in my mind, I'm like, man, you know, I'm gonna quit this job. It's an awesome job. I'm like, dude, I get my boss like, like four months notice, you know. So worst case scenario, I could probably get my job back, right? If I ever, if I leave on good terms. Second thing, it's like, you can always get another job, right? People think like, oh, that's the only job I'm gonna have, and I can't get another job, and this is like, you know, this is it, and then I'll never get. It. It's like you don't realize what's out there. You know, you're kind of like stuck in your ways. And like, I had this conversation with my son because he was uh, he was doing a busboy job at local Pete's place, right? And he's, people are coming in there and they're making more than him. And he's supposed to get this raise and he's not getting this and not getting that. He's doing the busboy job and I'm like, they're never ever gonna give you a raise. Because for one, you're never saying anything about it, right? So they're just not gonna assume that you want or, or just come out and be like, hey, you know what? You need more money, right? You now. get what you tolerate, right? but you get what you tolerate. And I think, like you know, he said, like there's somebody there that was been there for like forty years. And it's like people get comfortable in that situation, and then like leaving seems more scary. But it's actually riskier to stay somewhere where you know you're kind of capped, right? Because you'll never really realize your full potential when you don't take that chance. And that's what aging is. Aging is the pursuit of comfort. Yeah. Our body wants to just lay, you know, it just wants to have comfort. Wants to go lay on the beach. <laughs> I mean, even coming here, I don't. It's it's stupid. It's not like a big deal. It's just Dominican Republic. It's been kind of But you going out of the country, the cell phone signal shut down, and in, in the day we left yeah. for our flight, so yeah. we had given our kids to hang with my mom for the week, and no cell phone signal. I'm going out of the country. Yeah. You know, uh, it's well, it's four thirty a.m. So we had to catch an early flight. I'm like, you know what? I could just stay here in my comfy house, yeah. I got in the pool good you yeah, know you don't have to go through money. customs and right. security and all this bullshit but yeah. then you get here and you're like and i actually so i've taken up hermosi's idea uh with um twitter where i'm going to put notes to myself they're oh, literally yeah. just notes to myself so you follow me on twitter yeah. cool it's not for you it's for me <laughs> <laughs> but chad needs reminders but that's what and that's one of the ones i put was you know i, I don't remember the exact thing that i put but i basically put that fear it's now. It's when you do do the thing that you're scared of. Yeah. It's never as bad as you think of. And yeah. You're always happy you did it, and you're like, "How many more band aids can I rip off today?" Yeah. Because I did this thing. Now I can do the other thing. Yeah. You know, let's go. Let's conquer the world, man. Yeah. I came to. I conquered my fears and killing I, the boogeyman. Right. That's it. And that's how it was. Like the first time uh, I had to do like some public speaking, man. I was fucking right. shaking like a, like crazy, and then uh, like when I got done with it, I'm just like, I don't even know if I. 
cocked and somebody came up to me and said oh man that was great and i'm like i don't even remember what the fuck i said i just was like shaking the whole time and it's like okay and then as you get used to it you get used to it and you get used to it you still have butterflies and stuff like that when you're gonna talk you know it's obviously you know the more people the more you're like uh, 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 everybody you know? yeah this is a... yeah but it's like once you do it then the fear and all that kind of stuff is gone right so i'd say like if you're struggling in a position where you're you're not happy and you're kind of just, you know, getting by, like, what's the worst that could happen if you take a risk? You know, you know, you go back to where you were. But if you take a risk, you, you never know what's going to be out there for you. So I'd say, you know, take the chance, especially when you're young. You can do whatever. I'm telling my son, I'm like, go travel, backpack through Europe, blah, blah, blah. Like, enjoy it, because then, you know, it gets harder when you have family, right? Yes and no. I got both my kids here. I got one in a stroller. I got one in It's a... just more to plan. For sure, for and then sure. the mental makes it hard. But yeah. it's 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 harder. But uh, yeah, no, it's it, no, it's 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 all valid. I, I think at the end of the day, though, it's um, we we just reward the uh, the outcome is always the reward in our mind, and if we would just reward more of the daily activities, that fear, like you know, we're like the failing or passing, like it's it's it, and it's taught in school, you know, it's pass or fail, and you know we have a culture too much around that like every person who's had a pretty decent entrepreneur success story that i've read has had about 10x the failures they weren't scared to fail yeah. um you know and, and and i think we forget that you like like we've talked a lot about how we had the band before and how i always you know i'm always poo-pooing it because it was a waste of time but it it wasn't i mean there's so many small things i learned from that failure financially where it didn't do anything and we put ourselves out there and we didn't make it. It's cool. Now we've got videos to show our kids. We're in a rock band and everybody loves it. They're like, wait, you were in a rock band before? You know, yeah. like it's, it's a, so like we, we should like celebrate trying more than celebrate winning. You yeah, know what I mean? For sure. It takes a lot of guts just to try. Right? Yeah. So and, and it's like you might be at a place right now where you are trying to just learn a new skill set that you need. And then once you have that skill set, then, you know level up to the next skill set that you need and then level up and take that risk worst case scenario you go back and you're still an expert at the skill set that you learned but you carried the lessons you got from that journey yeah and that's what was underestimated like you're not back at square one yeah like i've had we we launched a, a whole crm product and all this stuff that we were trying you know and boy the time when you look at the time <laughs> tech support channel oh, and the, and the time that was put in and building the systems around it. And, and the annoying part is they work for us. Yeah. You know, and then you try to get to other people and they don't even log in, they don't use it, and there's all this stuff. Learning curve. You know, and then you break even on the business in, in your first year and you're like, well, that was a failure because you're making multiple six figures in other businesses. You're like, well, yeah. my time's worth a lot. And, you know. Yeah. But what, what I even fail to realize with that one, too, is there's so many lessons we learned what yeah. not to do. Uh, in the future with that or what other people do that, that we should not do it's, we can see the negatives very easily yeah you know? so um, well, I think in your mind you always come back to oh this was hard or this was but you don't really see what the positives were like look at you learn how to start a business from scratch okay just get in domain names that's a skill you know uh, get in websites set up that's a skill like optimizing and creating a product from scratch that's a skill set. Tracking right? meta pixels and Google Pixel so yeah, you can retarget learning, traffic. Yeah, and... Learning target marketing and all that kind of stuff. Now you can use that in different businesses. Uh oh, we're getting the we're gonna get the heat uh, <laughs> got a special <laughs> guest star. No fresh off the beach. <laughs> um, phone's ringing. Phone ringing. So we'll wrap it up with this. Um, you know, it, it must be nice because it is, right? We're enjoying it. We're having a good time with it. Work hard, play hard, right? We're taking this time out to kind of just, you know, give back with the podcast, give some nuggets if it helps anybody, you know, please well, let us know. And the beauty is that it, it must be nice because of a relationship that yeah. we fostered through partnership with, yeah. with our real estate business. I mean, this isn't just like a family. It's become a family. Yeah. Thing. But this isn't like, oh, our cousin got married and, you know, we're this yeah. is. Oh, we got to go to uncle bob's wedding and yeah it's gonna suck it's like yeah we can't wait because we're gonna have a good time and this came from 9 p.m phone calls with, with ryan that lasted an hour and a half i was yeah. reflecting back on this where i would pour every ounce of value i had into him you know and 
over four or five years, we just, we all just formed, you know, yeah. we didn't have to do a disc personality test. And we formed one of the greatest relationships I've ever had outside of, you know, like in, in outside of family, like in work. Like, yeah. I mean, this is like family. It's yeah. been amazing. It's, um, it's amazing kind of, uh, you know, answering your phone and, uh, you know, just getting out there who you're going to meet and how your life's going to change. Because a lot of times you think, oh, I'm going to have these same five friends forever. And it's like, then you get, you know, work family. And then you got friends from a totally different thing. Uh, a fun fact, I don't even know if I ever told you how I even met Brian. No. He, uh, he Facebook messaged me on my business page and it was like, can I talk to an agent or something like that? Like some kind of random thing. I'm like, yeah, how could I help you or whatever? And he's like, hey, could you call me? I'm like, all right, thinking it's like a lead or something like that. And he, then he started asking me about like being an agent and all this kind of stuff. And so was, the same way he met his wife, because he's talked to her too. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> He said he's peeking through the window. Peeking through the window, yeah. <laughs> God bless him. But, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up with Ryan's a creepy guy. And he stops you on <laughs> your gonna... socials. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap no, it up with that. Don't leave it us. on that. He's the man. We love Ryan. Yeah. He's a good dude. But he will. So, but he messaged, but to finish it, he messaged you. Yeah, he messaged me. And then I he was... wanted, so he saw what you were doing. Yeah. And it attracted him. Yeah. In the sense of, I want that thing. Yeah. And he messaged you. And yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. I, I wish I, I, sh I should get that. I should frame it and send it to him. You should. That's the wedding gift. The wedding gift, for sure. <laughs> now you don't get a card, Ryan. You get the, you get a Facebook message or <laughs> a framed picture of the it's, Facebook it's message. Stocky son of a bitch. Make it an NFT. I mean, what, what happened to NFTs? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right? it's, well, like, it's going like the disc profile. It's out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was good. I think it was yeah. real. Um, I've got to check out of this hotel room in nine minutes, so we're going to yeah. call this one. I'm going to go drink pina coladas on the beach and read my book.